Welcome to My Empower Project with your host, Erin Rowe. We will discuss nutrition, fitness, becoming your own boss, and just becoming better every day. I invite you to join My Empower Project as we embark, embrace, encompass, and enlighten. Today, I'm introducing you to someone with really broad and in-depth business experience. Bjorn is an ITIL expert, and he has more than 17 years of consulting experience in all different Fortune 500 corporations. He is the founder and CEO of multiple organizations. I now would like to invite today's guest to my Empower Project. Bjorn, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Of course. Now, there are so many types of businesses you're experienced in. I think it's safe to say you left a lucrative corporate career to do your own thing. (laughs) And we can revisit that, but for your current circumstances... There's one specific business venture I would love to speak with you today about, and I just want to ask you, can you please share with us your experience with drop shipping? Ah, drop shipping. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, I love drop shipping. It's, it's, a, it's actually funny how I got into it. I also sell or was selling products online through Amazon FBA, private label products. And then I just wanted to learn about Shopify, using Shopify as another platform to sell my products. And I knew nothing about dropshipping at the time. I only wanted to know, you know, to learn about Shopify, the platform. And then I went through another course that I had purchased just to learn more about it. And then it also spoke about dropshipping. And that led me into that world. I was, I was amazed at what I found. I was like, really? I can, you know, purchase or sell these products and I don't have to buy inventory up front. And, you know, it's just about the marketing, which I love to do marketing anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, you know, it was a natural thing for me to try. And, you know, it's kind of something that I did in between my uh, private label products on uh, Amazon FBA. And then it just skyrocketed. Now, how would you compare that actually, the FBA versus the drop shipping for somebody who does want to decide which to begin with? Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it's, they're complementary. Right. Um, you don't need to do one without the other. I think for a long term perspective for someone brand new, FBA private labeling is probably the better business model. But drop shipping is just an amazing thing to kind of start with, right? To to wet your feet with, basically. And the reason why I say long term business model is better with FBA is because with Amazon FBA customers are circling Amazon. They're like vultures. They're going around Amazon and wanting to buy something. So you just need to get your visibility up. And with drop shipping and, and using Shopify or WordPress, no one knows you. They don't know how to find you. So you have to constantly work to you know market to get people to your site. So from a long-term business perspective, it's definitely easier to do FBA, but you could do both together, especially during your downtime, during your process of private labeling. You know, like, for example, when you, you know, place an order with a supplier and they're manufacturing it and maybe it takes, you know, 20 days or so to be manufactured before even shipping. During that time, it's an optimal time to do drop shipping, right? To set up a drop shipping site and get things up and running. And then I must say you, you probably will at some point need some sort of assistant to help you with the constant marketing for drop shipping though, because like I said, no one knows your site yet and you have to constantly market. But I have a great strategy for beginners and advanced users alike that uh, I just released a new video on my YouTube that I'll talk about later. <laughs> oh, awesome. And I do agree on that and how you can do two simultaneously. And just like you, I learned FBA first, but drop shipping is probably a good starting point for some. Definitely. So with your experiences with these different e-commerce platforms, what led you to create a supply chain management company of your own? <laughs> wow, that was an interesting thing. You know, I it, maybe it's a little bit of my OCD, <laughs> and you know, no, not really, but it, it's it's just that I wanted to know every aspect of the process, right? So anything that I do, I create a process for it, right? An end-to-end process. What is involved in making this goal successful, right? This venture successful. 
So I write out the full process. And the one thing that was just kind of like, I have no idea what's going on over there was the whole supply chain part of it, right? You know, sourcing the supplier, you know, it's all the way in China and dealing with them and then the manufacturing and then the shipping, right? It was just like, wow, you know, all of these things I'm just kind of blindly going into. And I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to make it a little bit more efficient. You know, I started to really narrow down the other aspects of my entire end-to-end process, you know, as I went through my first product. But then I realized I had no control over the beginning of the process. And that's what made me say, well, you know what? I wanted to start something that I can just use to help my own products (laughs) and turned out to be, you know, a pretty good business and good opportunity to help a few other friends that were also doing private labeling. And then, you know, they just said, hey, you might as well, you know, make this into a full business and offer it to other people because people will trust you more as someone on this side of the world that is helping them to manage everything far off in a far land that they don't know anything about, you know, so that's where it just grew from there. Yeah, that must be a dream for you. And it's true. The beginning is the scariest part. The beginning of that e-commerce experience. Yeah, definitely. Do you you think back to any of the different maybe hiccups you experienced when you were just in your beginning pursuit of Amazon and dropshipping? Oh, wow. So many. Uh, And, you know, I think that's the key right there is that, you know, you can't let that stop you. You know, as an entrepreneur, you have to overcome obstacles. You can't just hit one roadblock and then, you know, just think that, oh, it's not going to work. Right. And I mean, we could talk about what what I was just mentioning with the supply chain side of it. That was a big hiccup for me. Uh, One of my first products, you know, I put all this money into it and I was like, oh, okay, I'm ready to go. And things were looking good. But then the supplier took forever to agree to the terms and then they took forever to manufacture. And then they, it was something out of their control too, because in China, the government passed a new law or something that had to do with their environmental protection agency, basically. And some, something with the, I can't recall exactly what it was, but something with the way that waste was outputted from the factories or something. And that affected the paint company that my supplier was subcontract subcontracting for for my product right so it wasn't even their specific factory but another factory that they use for a component of the product or something along those lines and that delayed me significantly so you know one of the biggest things that i saw is that focusing on if you're going into this business you know into private labeling if you go into it and think okay well i'll just place an order say a thousand dollars for a round number and then it's going to get me this product and i'll sell it and i'll use that to reorder not, it's not a good strategy because it's a cash business. It's all about your cash flow, right? And, you know, to place that reorder, you can't wait on the proceeds from the initial order in order to place, uh, place the second order because then you have to wait for the development, the, you know, the manufacturing again and the shipping again, and then you'll be out of stock for a while. All the delays that I experienced, if I was fully dependent on that one product to make money right off the bat, then I'd be upset and then I'd, you know, my expectations wouldn't be met and then I'd be ready to quit. Right. And I've grown into this thing now where I'm not only giving advice on business, but also on like relationships and things. And there's actually a new video I'm releasing soon that's talking about expectations and how that translates from business, even to interpersonal relationships. You know, it's about our expectations and setting the appropriate expectations so that you're not upset with the result and then leading to rash decision making afterwards. Oh, that sounds interesting. A delay, like you said, is something you can't predict. So I guess that does have to do with your expectations. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Your company, Seller Kai, how can that solve some of these issues? Or if somebody wants to try to avoid them, what would you do for them? <laughs> well, you know, we, we try to focus on that real personal touch, getting back to customer service, right? And, you know, our customers are very important to us. And we want to make sure that we're making the process easier for them. Right. Cause that was my biggest thing. It was just so much issues dealing with this person, this supplier and this freight forwarder and all this type of stuff. It was just always so much issues. Everybody had their own agenda. Our goal with Seller Kai is to make sure that we're making that entire process easier for you. So any issues you have, not only are we able to help solve those issues, like help to walk through the process for you, but because our company has like some top ex Amazon FBA sellers, we are very familiar with the entire process, even beyond the supply chain side of it, right? So going into launching your product and going into PPC, right? Your Amazon sponsored products, pay-per-click, we can give you insight onto that. 
give you insight into strategies on what to do for your inventory and where to store and how to replenish and, you know, things beyond just fulfilling a service and getting paid for it. Right. So we aim to give you more value by being your partner, your consultant in essence, just for using our services. That's incredible. Anyone would be lucky to have that extra handholding during something brand new. And for entrepreneurs that do put a lot on the line, ones that even don't have the means to do so, like you said, they expect to get the return and something gets in the way. I want to ask you kind of a general question about the choice between a passive income or the stability of a corporate job. Ooh, that's a, that's a loaded question in a way, right? <laughs> you know, it is, I don't fault anyone for choosing the stability of a corporate job, right? And yeah, I understand why people choose that. You know, I chose it for years, even when I, you know, started my first company years ago, I still kept my corporate job. You know, I had a very good corporate career, IT strategy management consultant, uh, you know, I was consulting with Fortune 500 companies all around the world and you know, helping them to improve their business processes and become more efficient. And I was getting paid a good sum for it. Very rewarding career. And then, you know, I have kids. So to me, it was like, ah, oh, you know, if I leave the nine to five and I have kids and you know, what if this happened, you know, with, with, as an entrepreneur, when you're running your own business, things happen, you know, you have your ups and downs and, you know, what if you can't make enough money for rent and, or for your mortgage or for your, you know, something for your kids for that month. So it's definitely a, a hard choice to make for some people, but in the end, it's about what do you really want in life and how, you know, how do you feel for, fulfilled in life? What will fulfill you? right? And your aspirations will help to make this decision. If you want more out of life, if you want the ability to, yeah, I have the ability to get that guaranteed check coming in with a corporate job and, and that helps me to take care of my kids, then I can't even go to my kids, uh, you know, basketball practice or their dance recital or something because, oh, you know, I got to travel for work or something or I can't get off because I have to ask for time off, but I don't have enough time in, in my repository of PTO or whatever. All right. So you have to choose that trade off. And, you know, like I said, for years, I chose a corporate job and it made sense at the time for me, but I reached a point where I had to make that decision. I had to make that cutoff because I will tell you one thing. It is virtually impossible to dedicate your time to the nine to five corporate job at the same time as to building your own business. Because, you know, even if you do it in the beginning to just kind of get started and to ease the transition, the demand that comes from your own business is going to overtake what you need to do for your corporate job. And you're going to have to make a decision at some point, and then both will suffer if you don't make that decision. So for me, it was just about, you know, that financial freedom, even though it's, you know, a little bit more risky, but the financial freedom, because I can earn more, you know, on my own time, I, on my own decision. If I, you know, as long as I get a good business model up and running and I'm making money from it and something comes up and I, you know, I have a huge trip that I want to take and I need to earn a little bit more money for it. Well, you know, I could put in a little bit more work and a little bit more hustle and get a little bit more revenue coming in. Then I'll be able to do that trip. I don't have to worry about asking for time off or anything. I just need to, you know, work a little bit harder so I could cover the cost of it. And to me, that was priceless. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Priceless. <laughs> tough choice. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, having multiple streams of income, what is it really like to be in your shoes? Could you walk us through a typical day? Ooh, from beginning to end? Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I was having a conversation with someone last night, actually, and they don't understand how it's possible to do what I do. I have multiple kids. I have multiple companies. Celica is only one. <laughs> Work out every day, or at least I try to. Sometimes I've been missing it here and there. <laughs> I'm very call it OCD with certain things. Like I have to have a clean house and, you know, I clean it myself and, you know, I cook and I travel and I do all these things. But to me, it's just about setting your goals, knowing what you want to accomplish that day and then making the time for it. There was a point in time where I was watching just about every show that was on TV <laughs> from Game of Thrones, which I still watch Game of Thrones when I find time to, I don't know, there's so many, right? And I was just loving it and then binge watching all of these Netflix shows and everything. And it was great. It was relaxing. It was fun. But that took up time from other things that I could be doing, right? So when people would say, oh, I don't have time to work out. 
Yes, you do. But you just have to choose, uh, utilize some of that time for working out as opposed to something else, right? There's always time. It's just you have to choose to use the time wisely, right? And TV shows are going to have to suffer or Facebook and Instagram time is going to have to be reduced a bit. It's funny because right now I'm probably on Facebook more than I've ever been, but it's not for personal stuff anymore. It's not, it's not for, you know, reading my friends posts and, you know, posting memes and stuff like that. Now it's because I'm in sp- uh, specific entrepreneurial groups and I'm con- contributing to them and networking, mm-hmm. which I think is the most important thing in any business networking. So I'm doing a lot, lot of networking and, you know, it, it's just, it's weird, but I'm choosing things that are, are activities that uh, earn me a higher return. Right. And watching TV was not doing much for me. And, but you still have to make some time for your fun too, right? So, you know, so it's okay to do it. I'm not saying don't watch anything, but you got to really, you know, choose wisely. I think networking is a really good and taken for granted tip. So do you have any others to share for maybe like new business owners or new up and coming entrepreneurs besides networking? Oh man, that's the most important one to me. I mean, I've gone to some networking events where it's not, it may seem like I'm just going and having fun. Like I was in Vegas recently. Most people are like, oh, you're going to Vegas? Oh man, that's, that's so cool. You're going to have a blast. Yeah, I probably will have a blast too, but, you know, but I'm also going for a specific reason and that is the network. And every time I've come back from some sort of networking event, of course you choose those wisely as well because there's thousands that you could potentially go to and you don't want to overload yourself. So you, once again, even with this, it's the time value of money and you need to see the opportunity cost of, this event versus another event or versus focusing on some strategy sessions for your business or whatever. But every time I've come out of these networking sessions, I've 10 X hundred X my income, my business. You know what I mean? It, I never come out of a networking session without some sort of actionable item, you know what I mean? Or meeting with someone and saying, Hey, we're going to talk again soon or, or talking about what we could potentially work on and jumping right into it you know, immediately, the, you, know, that, that, you know what, that will probably be another tip to give, right? It's, it's about moving swiftly, right? Yeah, you still want to think through things. You still want to do your due diligence, but you have to be willing to move quickly. You see an opportunity, jump on it, right? Don't wait. You know, the, I remember in 2003, I think it was, maybe four, my cousin, who was an electrical engineer at the time, he was with Motorola, and I mentioned to him that, hey, you know what? We should come up with something to uh, deliver power wirelessly to your like cell phone, right? Uh, or to your devices, laptop, whatever. He was like, no, you can't do that. That's, you know, it's too dangerous. To, it just wouldn't work. And I was like, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, I just let it go. And now, now look where we are, right? Now you have those like power pads, things that you just drop the phone on. And, you know, it's not fully wirelessly like across the room but it's a stepping stone. And I guarantee that 10 years from now or so, there will be full wireless charging, you know, where you're sitting on your couch and your laptop has some sort of transponder plugged in across the room and it's wirelessly beaming power to your laptop and your phone and you don't have to worry about anything and it's safe, right? And there'll always be other studies that say, oh, maybe it's not as safe as we think, (laughs) you know, but the, the technology will come and will continuously improve. So, Moving swiftly is important. Don't think that you cannot accomplish things. Don't, you know, don't come up with an idea and then say, oh, it's just too difficult to do. Move on it. Try. See what you can come up with. Trust me, you, you, you'll love the reward at the end. So after the idea, if you take action, that's when the scary stuff happens. And I feel like that's where a lot of hesitancy comes in. People that don't have the passion or are just new to hearing about Amazon or Shopify they think, oh, I'm too far removed. This is an unknown world to me. I just won't start. What would you say to someone like that? Listen, if you are involved in the process in any way whatsoever, then it's not, you're not far removed from it. And the reason why I say that is because you are a consumer of that e-commerce, of that digital world, right? Amazon is not the, or I should say Jeff Bezos, really. He's not the richest man in the world for no reason. Right. People are using Amazon like crazy, you know, and they have multiple services other than just buying stuff. They have their cloud infrastructure and other things. But in terms of e-commerce, it's the largest e-commerce 
platform in the US, right? And potentially in the world at this moment. If we're buying things on there, then you're not far removed from the process. All you have to do is just think of it from a different perspective. Like, how am I buying things on there? You know, I remember when I found out about FBA, I said, oh, it makes sense. That's why, you know, I always get those messages saying, don't contact Amazon if you need to return something. Instead, contact us directly and we can solve it for you and you give us a good review and those type of things. That's because there were all these third-party sellers in Amazon. But the whole time that I was buying things, I was like, how does this work? Like, how does Amazon do? You know, you, if you think like that, think to yourself, I'm, I'm involved in it as a consumer. So how would it work if, if I was on the other end of it? And maybe you'll come up with a new business idea. I do that for everything that I do, anything that I'm doing. If I'm walking out the door, I'm going to say to myself, hmm, this door that I have has these glass panels. Is there any weakness to it that I need to know about? And what, are, what would be a good business? I wonder if people are also thinking the same thing. And how can I fix this? Or how can I get into it? You know, it's, it's things like that. And you, know, you just have to realize that you are not far removed from the process. I, I buy, how many of us buy Apple items, devices and such, right? I buy tons of, you know, iPhones over the last few years and laptops and such. I made sure I had some stock in Apple too. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I I said to myself, you know, I don't want to be far removed from the process. If I'm doing something in the process, which is buying their products, how else can I be involved in it so that I'm earning money? Well, you know, let me get some stock. So I did that early on and it's maybe slightly prohibitive now for Apple stock, but you know, that thought process is what's important. See, realizing that you're not far removed from the process, you're involved in it. So how can you earn money from it as well? Yeah, forward thinking can really take you a long way. Just have to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I am a subscriber to your YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. It really is informative. What can we expect from your community, Goal Getter Gurus? Uh, So much more is coming. If you know Tim Ferriss, you know, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, those people are there talking about successful um, mentorship, guiding you to be more successful, positive thinking and such. It's a similar thing that you can expect from Goal Getter Gurus, right? It's about how to set and how to, more importantly, achieve your goals, all right? So I mentioned before that my background as an IT strategy management consultant for years, right, doing this for major corporations, and how to be more efficient. And I happen to be an ITIL expert and a lean IT expert and a Six Sigma black belt. So what I'm doing is taking some of those best practices, so those uh, uh, methodologies that are involved in that realm and translating it in how to make people more efficient and effective in their lives using those same tips and techniques and tools. All right. So we, there is a book coming soon. <laughs> Hopefully okay. by the end of the year, we'll have it. Also developing a, a course, it's the Goal Getter Academy. And then just in general on the YouTube channel, Bjorn Bees, and especially on Instagram, Bjorn underscore Bees, want to put out as much content as possible to help people in their lives. Like I get so much questions all the times for different things. And I want to make sure that I just have a central location that everyone can view that information. So it won't only be business related. It'll also be personal relationships, motivational, family, everything. Uh, like I said, I'm a father of multiple kids. I'm doing, you know, I have multiple businesses, I have my relationship, I have all types of things happening. So if I can do what I've been doing, anyone can do it. And that's the goal of the Goal Getter Gurus community is just showing you how to achieve those goals and not being, and not fearing them. So it is possible to wear that many hats. <laughs> I'll have to keep watching to learn how myself. Okay, this, this might be a stumper. If you could send yourself a message 10 years ago, what would you tell your younger self? Ah, oh, let's see. <laughs> Probably that don't be afraid. Well, you know, I mentioned this before in terms of how I had a nine to five as well as multiple companies, even from years ago. Well, in my opinion, that just was not the most efficient. All right. You have to be willing to take the chance at some point. And I know it's easier said than done. It to, you know, in some people's lives, they feel it's easier said than done because, oh, well, I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the you know, ability to do that. I don't even know what I want to do. 
Yeah, but if you put the effort into trying to figure it out, one of my favorite things that I do is I don't drive as much anymore because I'm always traveling. I'm always flying. And then with the advent of like Uber and things, whenever I get to a new city, I'll just you know take Uber and done. Mm-hmm. But I remember like, even back in college, I used to drive from Florida all the way to Brooklyn, New York by myself. It was actually cheaper to drive than it was to fly back then. You know, gas was cheaper. <laughs> and, and I would drive for, you know, 17 hours or so with no radio on. And I would spend that time just thinking in my mind and figuring out things. And part of a fraternity at a time, and I would put together some of our, I was the president of the fraternity, so I would put together plans of what we were going to do for the semester and things and create all of this in my mind just because I had some peace and quiet and some time to myself, right? So the moral of that story is that in that short time, I mean, well, 17 hours isn't that short to drive, but, you know, during that time, I was able to plan and create opportunity for myself um, just by putting the thought and time and effort into it. I would tell myself that 10 years ago is uh, you can do it. Don't, don't wait. Don't wait for another 10 years. Take the leap now. Think it through of first, of course, so that you have an opportunity. Identify what those opportunities are and jump into it right away. Don't be afraid to lose because every success story starts with multiple failures. That's so true. Hmm. Looking back, there's a few things I realized helped me in my journey. And over time, I created little small practices. I would like to see if any of these practices that I do and have incorporated into my day have made a positive impact in your success as well. So I do ask this of all my guests. I want to know if you have a morning routine and if that's a vital part of your day. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A (laughs) hundred percent. You know, it's funny. I read so many articles that talk about uh, Tony Robbins, for example, or or, or, I mean, there's so many people I can mention, but they they talk about how they've interviewed a hundred successful people. And, you know, at least 90 percent of them say they have some sort of morning ritual, morning routine. Right. And most of them will say that they get up really early, 430 in the morning. Richard Branson gets up at like 430 in the morning and starts his routine. I am not a morning person, <laughs> mainly because I, I'm, you know, I'm up late at night and especially with the supply chain company through Selakai and having some staff in China, they're up at different hours. So sometimes I'm up, you know, till four in the morning. So I'm not a morning person at all. So I'm not going to tell you I wake up early, but I do have a ritual once I do get up. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> you know? And it always starts for me with, you know, I, I make my bed as simple as that. That's, you know, people... You'd be surprised how I mean, people probably neglect that, but it's important to me that I make my bed because I want to make, I like it to be neat. It's just part of my ritual. It just helps me to start preparing for the day. So that's my first thing. Second thing is we do push ups or some exercise, some sort of reps to warm myself up, warm my body up. So here's where I'm starting to focus on the physical. This is before I hit the gym, you know, midday or later or whatever. Now, granted, the best time to hit the gym is in the morning, but you know, like I said, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so I gotta at least get some exercise in to warm up my body, right? So that's my physical. Then I go into my mental. I don't meditate in the traditional way, I would say, but I do a form of meditation. For me, especially since I've had my AirPods, you know, Apple devices again, right? Mm-hmm. But um, since I had my AirPods, I just, you know, plug them in because they're right, right by my uh, bed and I'll start listening to either some something soothing, right? And that's kind of like my few minutes before taking my shower or so. And then I, soothing to kind of relax my mind. But sometimes it's also, I'm studying multiple languages. You know, I speak a good bit of Mandarin, but I'm also learning some more Italian and I'm trying to brush up on my Spanish as well. So I'll listen. (laughs) So, you know, I listen to language lessons that will start playing and, you know, I'll just let it kind of go on repeat just to kind of immerse myself in the language. And, you know, it helps me. It, it's, it's actually soothing to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, that maybe that's not soothing to other people, but that's my mental, right? So I, I mentioned my physical, then I go into my mental and then I go into my goals. And, you know, that's how I even started this whole goal, get a guru community thing, right? Because goals are important. To me. After I do my mental, I review my weekly and daily goals. Right? And the reason why I say weekly is because, like I mentioned before, it's about uh, no wasted time, no wasted activities, right? So if I have a weekly goal that I set at the beginning of the week and I say, I want to, let's just say I want to do a thousand push-ups this week. This is a very you know, weird one, but you know, I can't think of anything at the, at the moment. Well, then my daily goal is going to be I need to do 100 today, 
then a hundred tomorrow. And what, you know what I'm saying? Something along those lines. So I need to make sure that my daily goals are aligning with my weekly goals. Oh, right? I like that. And it's helping me to get to that ultimate weekly, weekly end goal, right? Because one of the practices in lean IT, for example, or lean in general, is small step improvements. And that, that will be incorporated in our um, Goal Getter Academy. But how to achieve success by breaking things up into smaller steps. Uh, because, you, you know, you keep your momentum going. It's like uh, I used to, when, I, when I used to go into these big companies and set up uh, big transformations to improve their processes and such, if I started off by saying, okay, this is what we're going to do in two years, that would be unattainable. You know, people would be all excited. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then a month into it, you start losing the momentum. You start losing the interest, the fervor that, the fervor that everyone had. And you're just like, uh, you know, things start falling by the wayside. But if I say, okay, I know my goal is in two years to, to make this huge transformation. But I say, okay, this month we're going to do this. Then during that month, we're able to achieve it. And then people are excited because they achieved it. And okay, well, what's next? Right? So I broke it into the, these small step improvements. And then it carries over into the longer term goal. So that's part of my daily routine where I look at my daily goals and make sure that my daily goals are aligning. Cause sometimes, you know, you may add one here or there, like, Oh, I, I need to also do this, but does this align? Does this contribute to my weekly ultimate weekly goal? If it doesn't, I need to make sure that I'm not wasting too much time on it, you know? So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my uh, morning routine. I like that. You said you started with some physical, before going into mental, I think you know that I have a passion for fitness. Uh, yeah. How do you think that working out at all ties into success in life? Oh, that's imperative, right? There's no way that you can operate at peak efficiency without putting the effort into your temple, right? And your body is your temple. If you're not, I, I will say I'm not the best at eating right. <laughs> you know, I don't diet per se. And, you know, I've been fortunate that uh, I've been able to get away with it, <laughs> but I work out enough so that I can eat a little bit, you know, more cheap meals than, than most people would probably recommend. <laughs> but it's important to be doing something. It's important to, you know, especially nowadays people live such sedentary uh, lifestyles and, you know, you're sitting at desks for hours and such. It's important that your body is worked on and you're putting your effort both into the physical and mental because that will reflect on your achievements later. It'll help you to think clearly. It'll help you to, matter of fact, last week, there was one day that I was really, let's say I was a little bit lackadaisical, right? It was a, a really long night with some issues that I had to deal with, with uh, business and then I sk skipped my workout that day because I was just so tired and I was kind of out of it. And I was, I was happy I was able to take a day off and not do anything. So, you know, that's cool too, right? Getting a little recharge moment where you can relax and not do anything. And, you know, that ended up being a day I got to watch a couple of shows. Right? Oh. But if I wasn't working out regularly, then, t you know, taking off a day wouldn't be as fulfilling. You have to have that regular workout going on to the point where you feel like you have to each day you know in the beginning you're going to feel like oh i don't want to i'm tired i want to do it but after a month or so of working out regularly you're gonna every morning you're like, oh i gotta gotta hit the gym today you gotta you gotta do it it's like your body's just gonna feel energetic for it and the more you work out is the more you're gonna want to eat right you know good stuff right like there's i've never worked out and then said oh now i want to you know, a tub of ice cream and a bunch of burgers or something like my body just doesn't crave it because my body's like, oh, you just worked out. You feel energetic and oh yeah, let's get some fruit. Oh, a smoothie would be great. So it's like a, a cycle that once you can get it started, once you can get that wheel turning, the momentum will help carry you too. And it'll help you in every aspect of your life, including business. Yeah. Momentum's big in business too. Definitely. You had mentioned your Instagram. Where else can we find you online and where can we find Seller Kai? Ah, yeah. So sellerkai.com for sure. S-E-L-L-E-R-K-A-I. You know, that's our main website. Many people use our Facebook page, which is Seller Kai World on Facebook. And then me personally, Instagram has become the, the big thing for me, right? That's where I can communicate with the most people. So definitely look me up, Bjorn, B-J-O-R-N underscore bees, B-E-E-Z. Um, and then also Bjorn Bees on YouTube. I'll be putting out longer videos there, uh, trying to give out as much content as I can for everyone. 
but you'll get a lot of good tidbits here and there on Instagram. So that's definitely the best place. And then our go-getter gurus group, Facebook group, is where a lot of things will be posted in, in terms of text, right? So we have our video on YouTube, but written information on, on our Facebook group. So just look for Goal Getter Gurus on Facebook and Bjorn underscore Bees on Instagram. All right. Perfect. Bjorn, you truly do inspire me. I really thank you for your guidance and for joining me and my dream chasers here at My Empower Project. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much for your time, Bjorn. Oh, no. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to amazing things from dream chasers and from you personally. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening. I'm so happy to have you as part of our posse and would love for you to comment with what topics you'd like to hear about next. You can find out more at myempowerproject.com. Tap that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the exciting guests and enlightenment to come. Have a fabulous day.